for a brief moment. This is my favorite psalm of the scriptures, and, if, and, and my children knows it, everybody. In the book of the Bible, this is my favorite psalm. Um, the reason for it is this is personal. Um, it, it always have kept me going, and that is the reason why this is a personal psalm. And I would have taken much time this morning to exhort on it, expound on it, but I'm not going to this morning. Um, but let me just say this. The background of this psalm is, uh, it, it says right on the top of David when he pretended to be insane before Abimelech, who drove him away and he left. And the, you know, it was written when David, um, uh, by, by David when Philistines seized him in Gath. You know, what happened is he had killed Goliath and then he goes in and, and uh, Saul becomes angry at him and he's jealous of him. He's running after him, wanting to kill him left and right. And now David is trying to hide from all these places. And then he, in desperation, he starts to lose trust in God. And then he starts to weave this pattern out there. See what happens in our life also in desperation. When things are going absolutely wrong, rather than going back and trusting more on him, we start to lose our heart. And we are despair in despair, trying to find out where is God in this picture. So this guy goes in and he goes to Ahimelech, the priest, and tells four lies in one sentence and then tries to squeeze in, trying to get his men some showbread to eat. Remember, those are holy things that should not be touched by those people that have slept with women and all those. But he goes in and tricks the priest, and then he eats, he gets the showbread. And then he also gets the, the sword of Goliath for protection. Again, these were things, and he, he again tells a lie that I am in the king's business, even though the king is hunting after him. But when he goes in, what he does is, he now runs into the enemy territory to the enemy king. And there he is captured, he is in chains and all those. But what does he do again? He tricks them by being mad and saying that I am a crazy guy. And so, you know, the king says that, isn't there enough crazy people in my town that I want another crazy one in here, so let him go. That is how he goes in. But then he goes in into the cave of Adullam. And that is where he realizes his folly and he writes this psalm. He bands together 400 of these young people that is with him and he brings them together. So what I want to bring is a couple of things. You know, God, David remembers in verse 4, it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. As Sister Mina said, sometimes we have bad memory of what we have then God has done in the past. Remember what God has been faithful in the past. He continues to be faithful in the future. No matter what the circumstances is. And then in verse 7, God, he says, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. He realizes and he says, God protects those who trust in him. And then in verse 8 to 10, it says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. David realizes he, he doesn't have to trick anyone. He doesn't have to do anything else, but God will provide. And understand this, he is still Jehovah Jireh. He is the provider God that provides each and every one of us with our basic needs that we need. God will sustain us no matter what the situation is, no matter what the circumstances, and that is what is, has attracted me to the psalm. The fear of the Lord, you is saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. And that doesn't mean all our wants. It means everything that we need, he provides. In the right time, in the right moment, he will provide. And then the, the, the thing that he says, he, he brings in all his band of people. And in verse, you know, in chapter 34, verse 11 to 20, he is giving them a sermon. He's giving them a sermon, but these things, that dear, dear, uh, it, it, it touched my heart. In verse 13, it says, 
Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. And verse 14, it says, Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And the 15, it says, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Ears are attentive to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. What does it say? He tries and tells the people that take heed to your words. Let our yes be yes and our no be no. Let us be truthful in everything that we do. And then in verse 14, as he says, that turn from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. Not only your words need to be true, your walk needs to be true. You have to walk the way that we speak, that we are walking. Rather than, you know, there is a, David try to twist the words and try to make things and say that I am not what you think I am. I am something else because I am sent by the king and I am here on king's business. That was a lie. Make sure our walk is right. And the last one, he says in verse 17 to 20, these the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their evil. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, save those who are crushed in the spirit. A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He tries to say is, yes, follow the example. He says that I know that I was wrong, but now I am going the right way. Follow my example. Sometimes our, you don't need to, you know, just once he says, right, you know, speak the gospel and only if needed, use words. And I'm paraphrasing it. Sometimes our walk, our, our, our actions, our character can bring people to the knowledge of Christ. You know, as uh, um, uh, uh, Sister Anju was saying this morning that, you know, she has heard about how um, this family takes care of people. It's the same way many of you have done things that people have noticed. Understand your walk will attract people to the knowledge of Christ. That is what we need to do. Let our walk be right. Let our talk be right. Let our life be right in the presence of God. And then he will continue to be the Jehovah Jireh. That's all what I'm going to say this morning in regards to this psalm. This morning, God has been good unto us. This morning, God has, grac has been gracious and has given us the strength to sustain thus far, even in the midst of the struggles, even in the midst of problems in our life, he has still been the sustainer. He has been still the everlasting Ebenezer in our life. He is the Jehovah Jireh in our life. No matter what the circumstances you face tomorrow, as you go out, the mission field is out there. But understand that if God is with you, you will sustain and will carry you through.